Why is your running pace at zone 2 intensity slower in the morning than in the afternoon? And more importantly, what can you do about it? This is exactly what we'll break down in this video. Finally, I share a practical playbook to turn science into strategy for your daily zone 2 runs. So no matter the time of day you train, you're still getting the full aerobic benefit. Stick around until the end because I'll also show you how to test this for yourself with a simple two-week experiment. Let's start with core body temperature. A research published in Sports Medicine showed that body temperature reaches its lowest point around 4 a.m. and it only begins to rise as the day progresses, peaking in the early evening around 6 p.m. When your core body temperature is lower, enzyme activity is slow, nerve conduction is reduced and both muscle and tendons feel stiffer. Practically, this means when you run in the morning, your strike mechanics are less efficient and your pace drops even though your heart rate is the same. Another factor is cardiac output. In other words, the amount of blood your heart pumps every minute. A review published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research noted that stroke volume and overall cardiac efficiency are lower in the morning. Your heart is pumping slightly less blood with each beat. Less blood means less oxygen delivery to the muscles, which means your heart is working harder to deliver the same amount of oxygen to your muscles, leading to lower performance due to an elevated heart rate response for the same physical effort. Then there's hormonal balance. Cortisol levels are highest shortly after waking, and studies published in Chronobiology International have shown that high cortisol levels increases cardiovascular strain and suppresses recovery, meaning your heart rate rises more easily for the same workload. As the day progresses, cortisol levels drop, perceived energy rises and your hormonal environment becomes more favorable for aerobic training. Perceived exertion also plays a role. A review published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology noted that athletes consistently report higher rates of perceived exertion in morning workouts compared to afternoon sessions despite producing less power. Basically, your brain hasn't fully entered into performance mode. You're less alert and your mental resistance is slightly higher. Another factor is reduced muscular strength and neuromuscular efficiency. Atkinson and Riley showed that muscle strength, independent of which group is tested, consistently peaks in the early evening. Reaction time also follows this curve with nerve conduction speed increasing alongside body temperature. This means that in the morning, when your core temperature is lowest, your muscles are literally producing less force and reacting more slowly, which contributes to your slower pace. One of the biggest factors is glycogen depletion after an overnight fast. Numerous studies in a PubMed database have shown that faster training can reduce performance at sub-maximal intensities due to reduced glycogen availability. Endurance capacity is often reduced in the morning when subjects exercise fasted compared to fat, with perceived effort significantly higher. When muscle glycogen is low, the body leans more heavily on blood glucose if that's available, as well as stress hormones like epinephrine and cortisol, all of which can elevate heart rate and increase fatigue. In zone 2 training, although fat is a primary fuel, muscle glycogen and blood glucose still plays an important role in stabilizing pace. Low glycogen or glucose can make runs feel harder, elevate heart rate, and reduce running economy. I know what you're thinking. What if fat loss is also your goal? Then you should watch this video on optimizing zone 2 for fat loss where I share a smart evidence-based carbohydrate fueling strategy that raises blood glucose just enough to avoid a drop in performance while still matching the fat oxidation benefits of training fasted. That video is also linked below in the description. Check it out after you finish this one. There's also the issue of slower lactic clearance. This is also a big one. Another review published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research found that lactate removal and buffering capacity may be reduced in the morning, particularly during sub-maximal efforts. When it is harder for your body to clear lactate efficiently, the sense of heaviness or fatigue is more present even at low to moderate intensities like zone 2. Then there's chronotype misalignment. A systematic review published in Sports Medicine showed that the rates of perceived exertion and fatigue scores are also influenced by chronotype. This is more significant for evening type athletes our so-called night owls as they perform significantly worse in the morning compared to their morning type counterparts. Circadian preference impacts neuromuscular readiness and physiological arousal, meaning that if you're a night owl going for an early morning run, your pace is likely to suffer. Finally, sleep and hydration. If your sleep is fragmented or if you wake up even slightly dehydrated, your cardiovascular system has to work harder. 
Another review, also published in Sports Medicine, showed that sleep restriction raises submaximal heart rate and reduces endurance capacity. Sleep deprivation also raises cortisol levels further, disrupts heart rate variability, and reduces time to exhaustion. And in the fact that you've gone 8 hours without consuming any fluids and the morning becomes a perfect storm for a slower pace. When you put all these factors together, it's no surprise that performance is usually lower in the morning. This combination of physiology is also why most world records across many different sports are often broken in the late afternoon or early evening. By then, the body is at its metabolic and neuromuscular peak with higher core temperature, better efficiency, and more favorable hormonal balance. But does that mean that afternoons are always better for performance? Well, not necessarily. And that's what we're going to unpack in the next section. Most studies show that performance is better later in the day. Higher core body temperature improves muscle elasticity and tendon stiffness. Lactate is also cleared more efficiently and VO2 kinetics are sharper. A study published in Sports Medicine found that endurance capacity peaks between 4 and 7 p.m. But as many of you have probably experienced, sometimes afternoon runs don't feel any easier and can occasionally feel worse than the morning. Why is that? The first culprit is thermal regulatory stress. In other words, heat. Afternoon temperatures tend to be higher, which increases strain on your cooling system. Your body has to pump more blood to the skin to dissipate heat, leaving less available for working muscles. A paper in the Journal of Physiology demonstrated that even mild heat stress combined with exercise raises core temperatures and elevates cardiovascular demand. This can result in cardiovascular drift, where your heart rate climbs over time despite a steady effort and is especially pronounced in warm, humid conditions. The next issue is dehydration. The same paper also showed that if you haven't been mindful about your hydration throughout the day, you may be partially dehydrated by late afternoon, even if you don't feel thirsty. Normal daily processes such as coffee consumption and inefficient fluid intake are all contributing factors. Dehydration increases heart rate at submaximal intensities, decreases sweat rate efficiency, and reduces endurance capacity. This effect is more pronounced during longer sessions, which are the very kind of duration typical for zone 2 training. Then there's cumulative daily fatigue. A study in the Journal of Applied Physiology demonstrated that participants with active day jobs showed reduced force output and slower time trial performance in the evening compared to the morning. Every step you've taken, every stressor you've absorbed during the day adds up and can reduce neuromuscular efficiency, leading to slower paces at the same heart rate. We also can't forget sleep deficit. Just because it's later in the day doesn't mean that you have outrun the effects of bad sleep. Sleep deficit reduced performance regardless of the time of day and it's not just in the morning. Afternoon performance may still suffer from delayed reaction, decreased motivation and reduced lactate clearance. Another factor is incomplete muscle recovery. A paper published in the European Journal of Applied Physiology found that delayed onset muscle soreness, also known as DOMS, increased increases oxygen costs at sub-maximal intensities. If you ran intervals the day before or did some strength training, your running stride and biomechanics the following afternoon may be less economical, slowing your pace even if your heart rate is steady. Finally, there's still the issue of chronotype. A systematic review published in Sports Medicine showed that morning type athletes, our so-called morning lux, perform better earlier in the day while night hours peak later. So if your biological circadian preference doesn't match the time of your training, pace can drop regardless of all the other aforementioned factors. Just like in the morning, there are clear physiological reasons why pace can be slower in the afternoon, even if your heart rate is in your zone 2 range. But knowing all the reasons doesn't give you the practical steps to solve the problem. So the real question still remains, what can you do about it? And that's what we'll cover next. First, stop measuring your zone to progress by pace alone. Your pace will fluctuate based on a time of day, recovery status, hydration, and temperature. It's a moving target. Instead, train using heart rate during your zone 2 sessions. Morning pace is often slower due to lower core body temperature, reduced cardiac output, and increased hormonal stress. On the flip side of that, afternoon pace can also be slower due to accumulated fatigue, dehydration, and heat strain. But in both cases, if your heart rate is already in zone 2, you're doing it right. If your morning runs feel sluggishly slow but your heart rate is already in zone 2, just stay the course. That slower pace is still building your aerobic base. Don't try and force your body to perform like it's late afternoon. That's it. If your afternoon pace feels faster but your heart rate starts to climb, stay disciplined and keep it within zone 2. Don't drift into zone 3 if the purpose of the session is to stimulate zone 2 adaptations. This isn't just anecdotal, it's backed by research. Even elite athletes experience significant time of day variations in endurance capacity with their peak 
typically falling in the late afternoons, but this happens only when recovery, sleep, and hydration are optimal. Another study found that fasted or sleep-deprived sessions common in the early mornings resulted in lower pace and higher fatigue despite staying within the same heart rate zone. So here's the practical playbook on how to turn science into strategy for your daily zone two runs. In the mornings, extend your warm-up. Research confirms that muscle temperature and enzyme activity improves with even 10 to 15 minutes of gentle running. Rehydrate with 300 to 500 milliliters of fluid with electrolytes. And if you're running faster, consider a microdose of 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates consumed just before setting out on your zone 2 runs. Studies by Horowitz and Cole showed that small cup intakes before zone 2 don't blunt fat oxidation but do improve performance and protect muscle. In the afternoons, manage heat and hydration. Aim for consistent fluid intake throughout the day. And if it's hot, add electrolytes to the fluids consumed before you run. If you notice cardiovascular drift where your heart rate rises 5 to 7 beats at the same pace, Ease off the pace to stay within zone 2. This is not a sign that you're losing fitness. It's simply your physiology in the heat. And for chronotype alignment, track your own data. Try this two-week experiment. Alternate morning and afternoon zone 2 runs at the same route, same duration, and same conditions wherever possible. Note your pace, heart rate, perceived exertion, and sleep quality. If you consistently see better performance in one time slot without higher fatigue, Plan your key long runs or workouts towards that window. This approach is supported by a 2023 meta-analysis published in Sports Medicine and Health Science, which suggested that afternoon training may yield slightly better adaptations overall, but only if it fits your lifestyle and recovery. The bottom line, don't chase pace when it comes to zone 2 training. Although training to pace is king when trying to run PRs in specific distances from the 5k up to the marathon, zone 2 training is better coupled to heart rate than pace. Whether it's morning or afternoon, your true goal in zone 2 is to stay aerobic, build mitochondrial density and improve fat oxidation. Slower paces in the morning doesn't mean you're unfit and faster paces in the afternoon doesn't mean the opposite. Train the physiology you have at the moment and the adaptations will come. Drop a comment below and let me know if your zone to pace is generally faster in the mornings or in the afternoons. Mine is often faster in the afternoons. Let's keep learning from each other in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.